Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to Lesson 8's prep video. In this tutorial, we'll be working on our main widget, so that's what we'll be talking about in this prep video. This video and this series have been brought to you by Patreon sponsors like Random Number Generator. That said, let's make a start. In this tutorial, we will be working on our main UI, or our main UMG. And in particular, in this video, we'll be just doing the visual side of it. So this UMG, by the way, will store the visual information around the stats. We'll set that up. And the next tutorial will actually have these visual elements become dynamic and actually convey the information we want to convey. Later, we're going to use this widget potentially to call other widgets up. So when you want to pick something up, there's going to be a prompt to say pick this up. I haven't fully decided if I'm going to use my original approach, which is to have another widget, or if I'm going to use the main widget to just have a text pop up. And we'll, we'll create a, a sub widget either way that gets called on its own or gets called as part of this widget. In this tutorial, we'll also import our some of our UI art assets and we'll create a custom UI element, custom primitive. And I'm going to explain what that is in just a moment. But first, let's talk about just what a UMG is. So UMG just stands for Unreal Motion Graphics. It is the replacement to the old HUD system that Unreal used to use. It allows for more dynamic uh, elements. It allows for better control over some things. And something to remember with this is that it's just simply a user interface. So I will use UI and UMG interchangeably. There are both visual elements to this, as we'll be working on today, or code, or in our case, scripted elements that we'll be working on in the next video. Now, something to bear in mind is that when you import an art asset for a UI, you should set it to a UI group. So when you import any texture, you can set what group it belongs to. The UI group will compress the file differently and will have it work slightly differently in Unreal. It just makes things a little bit easier. In fact, actually, it makes seeing what the asset is in our content browser also easier, oddly enough. So let's talk about that custom element thing I brought up earlier. And there are sort of two types of custom elements that you'll see talked about. Now, a lot of tutorials will focus on the first type. And don't get me wrong, we will be using those. We will be. Um, in fact, I'm gonna the example I give is something we'll be doing towards the end of the series, or if you want to look at my quick tutorial series, you'll see that in there. So I want you to imagine for a moment that you're gonna to want to create a scalability menu. And a scalability menu is the visual settings menu. You know, do you want high, low, medium, or epic quality? So do you want to have a high view distance or a far view distance? Do you want to have um, high anti-aliasing? Do you want to have uh, epic shadows or low shadows? Things like that. So that's the scalability menu. Now each scalable item, so the view distance itself or the anti-aliasing itself, uses the same setup. Um, and that setup can be varied, but there's going to be the same setup across these buttons. How you set it up will be varied, that is. So you can have, you know, a progress bar in the center. And on each side, you can have a button that lowers the value or a button on the other side that ups the value. You could have text that changes, but you have three elements, a button on one of the left side that lowers the value, some display of what that value is, be it text, be it progress bar, be it something else. And on the right hand side, a button that raises the value. Now, instead of creating, you know, six, you know, sets of buttons with six sets of text, you create one widget that has that button, that in display of information in the center, and that second button. And then you call it that widget six times, and you use each one of those iterations or instances of that widget to change the various settings. So you can make a widget that you call and just pass information into or get information from. And we'll actually be talking about a little bit more about this in the next prep video. Not the actual widget element, but passing information into widgets. Um, we will be doing this, by the way, in our second section of the tutorial and in the third section. And also when we get to our scalability menus and our save menus and things like that, we'll be doing this. 
Now the other case, the one that I often don't see talked about in, in tutorials, and in fact have, you know, if you looked at the first video, Todd, a few marketplace product uh, products I was looking at, have noticed that even those products don't don't always take full advantage of, and we are going to take advantage of it, and that is custom primitives. So imagine that you want all your buttons to be green or brown or gold or something, or you want your default font to always be a particular font, which is what we're going to be doing, by the way. Instead of going in and every time you have a button, changing the button color or changing the font to the font you want, which takes a lot of time, especially if you have to change your font or you have uh, decided that you don't like the design to go by in and find all of these. Instead, what we could do is create a primitive component. So a button is a primitive component. We can create a custom button where that button is always going to be that color. And anytime we call that button up, it is that color. And if we want to change that color down the road, well, we just edit the primitive and all the other buttons now are that color. Or in our case, we're going to have a font and we want all our font to be of that type. Okay, well now we have a new custom font that we can use and we can go in and change every text instances, instance or we can create a custom text and anytime we put text on our UMG, we use that custom text, it has our font. If we decide, hey, we're gonna change the font, well then we just find the custom font primitive for the UMG and change our font in there and all the fonts on the UMGs change to what we set it to. So this just makes things a bit easier. It cuts down on workload. It allows for better organization, allows for better updates and scalability, oddly enough, of our um, of our UMGs. That said, well, that covers everything we need to talk about for this video. And this video has been brought to you by Patreon sponsors like Rian, Haynes, and Quad Menson. If you've enjoyed this video or this series, please hit the like button down below. It really does help this channel out. And if you want to make sure that you're here when the other tutorials get released, hit that subscribe button as well. That said, I look forward to seeing you in the main tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.